each of us, low subscribers, friends, and people that want to sort of scoot us, um, people that are following us. Um, we've got many videos on recently, and then now we've got two that won't go. And I thought it's quite important to show you this one. Uh, it's what happens when you leave your mobility scooter outside and have an inferior quality off waterproof cover that's on it. You can buy cheap ones for £20, £25. Uh, US dollars, you're looking about the same, about $20, $30. Uh, please spend more money, £50 a good co cover. Make sure when you buy a waterproof cover that the stitching has a seal over it so water can't get in the stitching. Customers tell us with this scooter, it's working fine, and now it's not. Uh, there's water coming out every orifice of this scooter here. It's a big puddle on the back here. It's soaking, it's running out. As soon as I put the seat up, the water's running out here. I don't know how he manages it. Going up the street, he's gonna get a wet bum. So the waterproof cover that he's got is not good. He's leaving it outside, it's gonna get rusty, a nightmare to repair. When water gets in, you've got problems. So of course it's not going. It's in drive, puddle of water everywhere, off the scooter onto my carpet. Uh, I'll show you what happens when he tries to switch it on. So when he tries to switch it on, it's in drive, turns the key, and that light's flickering away. Power's coming up. Now, possibly there's water inside the ignition barrel. Water gets in there. Uh, it'll start corrosion inside, therefore it's not making a proper contact. Um, this scooter has been in my workshop now over the weekend, so trying to get it to dry it out. It is still wet, as you can see. You know water everywhere now what i've also noticed that i think one of the buttons they're not working why is that i can tell you right now i see it fading there yeah nothing nothing's working uh, it's starting to work now and as you can see the indicators flashing there So it, it is working, but the reason of that is when I pressed it, when I went on site, water was coming out the button here. So this water got in here, and let's see, switch it on and off again. No error code whatsoever. Let's see. It's going in reverse. Going forwards. May I say I'm amazed this has actually happened? Because when I tried it and put it in the van, it would not work. And now it does. So if your scooter gets cut out in the rain, bring it inside, dry it out. Uh, I'm going to open this, um, heat it up. Uh, if you're doing it with a hairdryer or something like that, keep it, don't have it too hot. It's supposed to be warm. Or take it off, dismantle it, put it in your house and leave it for a couple of days so it dries out naturally. I also use silica beads. I take it out, put silica beads over it, it'll dry it out. And then, of course, I regenerate the silica beads and use it for the next time. I buy a couple of kilos at a time, and they, they'll last me two or three years. But the switches, this one works. Uh, well, it's decided not to work, maybe to work. It's working now, so that is a problem. So we want two indicator switches, two horn buttons, and we're not working now. Oh, we're working now. Let's see. And it's not working now. Okay, just because we press some buttons. Better switch it off and we'll dismantle that now and see how it looks inside. So as you can see, important keeping your scooter dry. If it does get wet, as I said to you before, put it in a room. A warm room. Don't have a hairdryer too close that you, you melt things. Naturally if possible dry it out naturally. As I say, we use silica beads. I'm gonna take the cover off here. I'll show you how to take it off. Screws underneath it. Uh, how does it look inside? I can assure you, all the buttons are gonna be rusty. Um, we keep the buttons in stock, and I think they're wanting a, a different key. This is your standard spare key that you get with uh, that particular scooter. They've also got another key which is called an arthritic key. We keep the, key, the scooter, uh, scooter keys in stock. The arthritic key has a cover that goes over the top of the ignition barrel. So if it does happen to rain, 
it sheds off the water and doesn't go in the ignition barrel. Sometimes this can happen overnight when it gets wet, the water gets into it, sometimes it'll happen over a period of time. Of course, once the water gets in there, uh, it'll make a contact, it'll start to rust, uh, and then therefore when you switch it on, it's not putting the correct amount of uh, voltage and current that it requires for the scooter to start up. Even for your lights and your indicators, it requires a nice clean connection. Uh, the buttons are not much, the, you don't want enough buttons, you're looking at about £10 each. Um, we can supply them wired if you want, or we can sort the wires on there for you. As long as you get in contact with us beforehand, we can sort something out for you. Um, and I say we, we do ship all over the world, but uh, mainly to the UK. So let's dismantle this and see how it is underneath the tiller head. Right, I hope you can see inside here, it's all rusty. Let me see if we can get some more light on the subject for you here. Okay. It's all rusty in there. Every single connection is rusty. The ignition barrel. And here we've got a snail living in there. A wee baby snail. Um, the ignition barrel looks actually not too bad. But I reckon, yep, yeah, there'll be definitely water in there. That's why when we're switching on you, we're getting the flickering lights. Um, you can see corrosion on the switch here. Let me see if any of these, if I can open any of these. That's the hazard one. Okay, you can see the colour in there. It's brown. That's rust. Let me see. That's the spring. If you see that there, it's all rusty. Let me get that closer. To show you so that how that connection looks like if it's focused in there it's supposed to be nice golden color now you could say get a wee glass fiber pencil and you know give it a clean you could technically speak and do that but if I do that to you and then five five days five weeks down the line it starts to act up again I'd rather put out uh, another new button so what we're going to do is we're going to replace all these buttons here and the ignition barrel I'm not going to show you how to solder it I've done plenty of videos with soldering as I say if you want you can actually buy connectors on here you can cut the wire buy a very small connector and you can slide it on rather than soldering it uh, you can do that as well it doesn't have to be soldered on because the connectors come with a wee uh, a spade terminal that you can put it on there. The terminal's actually on, on the um, switch itself. What I will say is, there's threads on these, okay? What can happen is, as you can see, these turn very easily. We tend to super glue, super glue these on before we put them on. It's just to stop it from unscrewing itself and falling off and then stops, stops working. So let's put new switches on here and see how it goes from there. Okay, I've been to the store now. Uh, I've got a new ignition switch. As you can see, nice and shiny. And this is the key I was talking about. As you can see, the key has got a cover over it, so whenever you put the key in, which way around, this way around, you put the key in, it covers the top of the ignition, uh, ignition barrel, so no water can get in there. It's called a aesthetic key. Okay, we've got them installed as well as a nice wee shiny ignition barrel. Uh, switches, Pride usually have white ones. I've only got yellow ones in stock. Spoke to the customer, he's no objection as long as it works. Um, I do have the original switches in stock. Okay, can't use the red ones on these because the red ones, once you press them down on this particular product, uh, the red ones when you press down it, it locks in place, like say the light switch on the blue light switch, whereas these ones are automatic. Whenever you switch, press the button, it makes a contact on board memory system or computer, whatever it has there, decides how many blinkers it goes for or how many seconds it, it activates for, uh, and then it switches itself off. So we, we can supply you the, the standard um, Pride ones, uh, and if you are wanting the white horn button, we can get them. It's just, I don't have any in stock, I must have used uh, some of the other months and I've no placed an order which is not very good but 
These will do. We've got them on the shelf. Hundreds of these. Because the water gets in. Uh, as I say, when I was on the site and I was pressing these buttons here, there was water jumping at them. So I know for a fact it's water that's caused it. It's working intermittently. It's going forward, it's going back, and it's, I, I believe it's due to contamination uh, of water inside there. So I said, I'm going to go and go on the workbench, solder all these connections, um, unsolder all these. I'll quickly do that. Well, quickly. Uh, half an hour, 40 minutes, an hour. Maybe I'll do all them. Need to do it properly. We put the shrink on there. Um, just so that it stops the water getting in there. And I need to take, is that, I'll show you what I mean by gluing these on. That's brand new, and I can unscrew it. So what can happen is, if somebody puts this on and it slackens off by mistake, the wires hold it in place and you're, you're bored, you're driving along, you start to move this connection, and eventually that's gonna come out. Uh, and then everything's gonna fall to pieces and then it won't work, work at all. Now let me take this apart gently and show you how it's supposed to look. Now if you look in there, where's the old one? What have I done with the old one? Right, there's my snail. I don't know what I've done with it. Ah, still on here. Right, so as you can see the old one, it's all rusty in there. Okay, that's inside the new one. See how shiny it is? That's how it's supposed to be. That's how it's going to make a good connection. Let me put this back together before I lose bits and pieces. It's only held on with a few screws, you know, off the thread, a few turns of the thread. So they say I'll open it a wee bit, put a bit of super glue on it, close it again, it's never going to come apart. So I'll get that done, put it back together, and we'll see if everything works okay when I've done that. Okay, I'm now at the workbench here. Let me move this stuff, I don't need that for this job. Uh, what I advise you to do, Pictures, lots of pictures, so you know what cables go where. If you don't have a camera to hand, I highly recommend you write everything down, what goes where. Do one at a time, so you don't get them mixed up. Next minute you're pressing the, the horn button and the indicator goes on. Uh, I like to put a bit, as I said, a bit of slacking it off. Just put a bit of, bit of glue in there. Just a drop. It stops it from unwinding. So if you get these from us, they should already be be glued. In the gap here. It needs to go in the gap rather than the access. It needs to go in the gap. That's it. We don't need to do the ignition barrel. So two horns and two indicators. I've only got one here. I need to go and get the other one. But what I want to do is we want to unslacken these. Let's do the one that's open that I've shown you. You can use a, a spanner. Um, I like using along those pliers spanner is quite quite wide turn that I presume this will be the hazard switch because I'm feeling it in a triangular I'm turning the, the switch there you go hazard switch you can see it's all rusty inside there, no use for anybody. New switch going on. What some suppliers do, put a bit of glue on in there to stop it from rotating just in case it slackens off.
Right, let's me solder the connection on here. Uh, we've got two indicators that has been done, two horns that have been done, and a new ignition that's been done. Now they say they can be soldered on, like say that one soldered on, heat shrink wrap, that one, that one, but this one, just to show you, I've actually put um, female connectors on it and pushed them on. So, and they're solid, so you don't necessarily have to solder them on there. You can just get terminals and put them on. So you can do it either way if you've not got a solder on it. So now that I've put this together, let's connect her up. Right. It's that one, the multi connector in there. That's it in. And of course, let's not forget the throttle. As you can see, it's still a bit wet. The seat's wet. That's dry anyway. So let's try with my throttle connector. I'm not going to put it all together yet. Because what I want to do is I want to make sure it works. I don't want to put it all together and then there's something else that's wrong. Or I've not soldered it properly. I've not put the connections on right. Because I can make mistakes as well, like anybody else. Right. Oh, look. Got a flashing light. Why is it flashing? Because the ignition was on before I stuck the throttle pod on it. So let's switch it off. Switch it back on again. And there we go. The light's not flickering that it was doing before. It's coming straight on and off. No flickering whatsoever. So it's a proper flow of current and power through the ignition barrel. No water stopping it. Um, Let's try indicators working other side. The, this particular model, the indicator will go off automatically and horn are both working as well. The last time when I was using the indicator, I pressed the left indicator and tried to drive it and it wouldn't move. Okay, so we're moving forwards and back. Before I'm going to take this back to the customer, I'm actually going to take it for a test drive to make sure that it's maybe not going to cut out again. Because this just moving back a few inches is just not good enough. It tells me it's working, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw this, screw this all back together with all the screws that I've laid out on the, on the floor panel here. Uh, put it back together, take it for a good test run, charge it over tonight, tomorrow I'll take it for a test run. If, if I'm happy with it, phone the customer, Bob's your uncle. Uh, should be going back tomorrow, uh, tomorrow afternoon. So hopefully this video was informative what to look for um, if your scooter does get wet. Okay, it got wet here. We figured it out very quickly um, because I, I know what I'm doing. Uh, I've done this quite a few times. But if you've done the head here and there still wasn't an issue, you would check further back. Uh, go to the circuit breakers in the back which are on, uh, this one has one at the bottom of the battery, okay? Check to make sure that there's no water on the terminals, uh, it's not corroded. Uh, check the battery terminals that they're not wet. Check the controller, check for corrosion. That's what you're looking for. And work your way back, or start at the back and work there, but because I know of, you know, the flashing lights when you stuck the ignition on and the, the temperamental power lights, I knew it was in there. Plus all the water coming out of the switches is a kind of giveaway. Uh, right, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, we had to sort this scooter. If you'd like to subscribe, if you have got any questions below, feel free to, to, um, to, to leave us a wee message. I'll, I'll put a wee link for you if you need any switches or any ignition barrels, is below. Uh, and yeah, you take care and stay safe.